Hi, my name is Alex, and in this episode of Magic Missile Minis, I'm going to be doing a custom conversion for a Space Marine kill team. So, to start off with, I do a little bit of assembly, starting by attaching the two main body parts of the Space Marine together, and kind of working everything around this kind of as a base. So I wanted to make this Space Marine still fall in line with the other Space Marines I had been making for my custom chapter. Uh, but for these guys, I wanted to make them a little bit more interesting. So I decided to add a kind of steampunky aspect to their design. Aside from just really enjoying steampunk, I feel like it goes really well with uh, alongside the kind of Lovecraftian theme of the miniatures. But as you can see me doing here, I cut up the backpack that these guys have, and I also slice up an old gun that I got from an old bit box, and kind of use that and attach those guys together to create this kind of weird steampunk, slightly more technological um, attachment onto the back of the Space Marines backpack. Um, and again, just trying to create a slightly more technological feel and adding random bits of tech that do who knows what honestly but just to kind of create a cool almost adeptus mechanicus vibe on these guys but not quite but after attaching that piece to the actual backpack i decided i would do a little bit more assembly and added the arms onto the main body of the space marine and with the arms attached, I can start adding some green stuff. And something I wanted to add to these guys was kind of a mini cape that went across their chest and underneath one of the pauldrons. Um, I was planning on having this kind of be tattered and torn to kind of mimic the, again, the kind of Lovecraftian feel. And I also just wanted to make sure that these guys stood out from other Space Marine chapters. I didn't want them to just kind of be another color scheme i wanted to actually make them have something that's fairly unique to them and have them be recognizable beyond just a color scheme what i'm thinking about as i'm sculpting this cape and all the folds here is trying to make sure that uh, all the folds are nice and sharp because i think we have it in our heads that like cloth is very soft and flowy but actually when it folds it has very sharp angles so that's just one tip for whenever you're like sculpting clothing or anything like that you want to make sure that all of your details are sharp and very defined and that'll help people actually know what they're looking at as you're sculpting the folds of the clothing Unfortunately, later on, I think I'm gonna kind of go over it fairly quickly because I don't actually have a really good way to sculpt cloth that's kind of farther away and drifting away from the miniature itself. I'm gonna have to do some research and figure out a better way to do that and hopefully share that with you guys. I then move on to add some other details onto the miniature. And you can see me here mixing up a little bit of milliput because what I wanted to do was add some little like swirls and patterns onto the actual pauldron of the space marine himself and these kind of mimic again a lot of the adeptus mechanicus stuff which is this kind of like um fancy kind of little details onto metal parts of the miniature i don't really know what to call them they're kind of like little embellishments that uh you often can see in steampunk designs and here I'm specifically using milliput because I need to shave this down so that it matches the rest of the rim on this pauldron. And here you can see me floundering trying to figure out how to uh, sculpt um, the kind of flowy part of the cape. As I mentioned, I don't really have a good process for this. I'm just kind of winging it and hoping that it looks good. If you actually know of a better way to do this, uh, leave it in the comments below. Um, and I might uh, look at that and try to incorporate that into a video once I kind of have a better on handle on how to do this. But anyways, moving on, as you can see me doing here, I add some of those little embellishments onto the chain sword as well. You might have noticed I did some of those in Milliput beforehand, but they actually kind of just got destroyed because I was handling the miniature too much. And actually, uh, the Milliput, um, I used it because I was doing the other embellishments in Milliput. But you don't actually need to do these ones specifically, because I'm not intending to shave these down later on, because they're not actually trying to go seamlessly into any other details of the miniature, like the rim of the pauldron. So I just did these in some green stuff. 
And now we check back into me not knowing how to make a cape. And this time I've got a craft knife. Uh, so I kind of start, again, I don't know what I'm doing. I just start hacking bits off of it to make it look better. I think in the end it looked all right, but I do need to figure out a better way to do this. With that sorted, I then go back to the uh, pauldron and shave off the milliput so that it transitions smoothly between the plastic of the miniature, um, kind of like I mentioned I was going to do earlier, and that just makes this look nice and seamless, and that's why I specifically used milliput for this. And then with that finished, all I need to do is add the head of the miniature, and so uh, one of the things I wanted to do was add like a big old pipe that's coming out of the Space Marine's helmet. And so here I chop off a little bit of the helmet itself for where I'm going to attach that. After which I can glue the uh, head onto the miniature itself. And then I take this little piece of tubing that I scrapped off of another miniature and glue that onto the helmet and torso. And after that, I add a couple final details. Uh, I want to add a little bit of more techie stuff onto the other pauldron. And so I just chopped off some random bits uh, and glued them on to something that looked vaguely technological and not particularly important, which is generally how steampunk works. It's just kind of everything is slapped on and hoping that it looks cool. Um, but yeah. I also add a couple of these purity seals from uh, another set of Space Marines that I got to kind of cover up the seam where the cloak kind of didn't actually manage to go underneath the other pauldron that I didn't notice later. So I just glue that on to cover that up. And then I just prime the miniature and here you can see the mini, uh, the actual conversion finished. And now the mini is ready for painting. So I really liked the paint job I had done on my Little Nightmares project a couple weeks ago. And what I did with that was painted everything purple and worked up the highlights from there and it created this great dark feeling. And so that's what I did with this guy as well. I was gonna plan on adding a little bit more color and not making it quite so stark uh, so that it looked a little bit more, uh, a little less artsy, I should say. But what this will do is, since I'm not actually base coating anything um, beyond this purple, everything else is just going to be working up highlights from the purple. It'll create um, kind of a unison throughout the entire piece. So all uh, the shadows of this miniature are actually going to be the same color, this dark purple. And as you can see me doing here, I actually start to film the painting of the green. Um, unfortunately, I forgot to film where the actual paints that I used. Uh, I'm using Vallejo model color. Um, but to get this color, I added kind of a forest green type color uh, and a cold kind of cobalt light blue. Um, and that creates this really great tone that I really like. Um, and having the purple in the shadows I think is really nice as well because the entire color is very cold. And so this color is a kind of nice cold faded color. Um, which helps with the grimdark vibe. If you want to make anything look grimdark, you generally want to mix in blues and um, just gray all the tones down, basically. And here, mostly what I'm doing is wet blending. I'm not actually doing any glazing or anything like that. I've just got both colors, both the shadow color and the green that I've mixed, and I'm just using those and uh, putting them on the miniature wet and then mixing them that way. Um, I've tried glazing in the past and I thought it was really cool until I realized that wet blending just makes a whole lot more sense. And it also just takes significantly less time and I find I enjoy it a lot more and just get a better result. Here you can see me moving on to the rest of the miniature and I actually make sure that I have a little like dark green in all the parts that are supposed to be this green, not letting a ton of these um, darkest parts of the miniature just be the purple because that way you can still look at the shadows and distinguish color between the different parts uh, rather than just have the shadow all the parts of the shadow be the same color, which I didn't quite like about um, the little nightmares, uh, little diorama that I had made before. I think my only regret with the color scheme that I did with this guy so far is I think the purple that I used for the base tone could have been a little bit lighter. Um, I found that it's really difficult to actually see now that the paint had dried um, that it is a purple and not just a dark gray. So I think next time I'll make the base um, tone that I did, the base purple that I covered everything with, a little bit darker. 
but with the first layer of green done, I then move on to do the highlights. And so to make this highlight color, I add a little bit of white so that it's not super vibrant, but I also add a little bit more of the blue so it's also not too faded. Um, adding the light kind of grayish blue uh, to the color also helps make these highlights very, very cold, which I think is really important because this color scheme is incredibly similar to that of the Plague Marines, if you know what those are. Um, and I didn't want them to just look like the Plague Marines, and so having the colors be really cold is important because the Plague Marines color scheme is, again, the same greens and coppers, but uh, the green that they use is like a yellowish green and a kind of a sickly green. Um, and so I wanted to avoid that, and the main way that I do it is through adding this blue into the highlights, which makes the color still is the same green technically, but just very subtly different, and so that difference is subtle enough that they're distinguishable. I then uh, start painting all of the leathers, and so I do this by mixing up a brown that I would normally use, but again, I also add some purple into this color, kind of since basically all the colors that I'm mixing have a little bit of purple in them, whether it's the shadows or the base color itself. Again, just to tie everything together and having this kind of be this dark faded brownish purple, make sure that you don't actually get drawn to it too much and it's not very distracting from the main parts of the miniature. It's kind of a side detail that's faded and looks good once you notice it, but doesn't actually draw your eye too much. And then I can move on to add the copper color. And again, I did this slightly differently than I normally do. Um, I normally would add a red to make the copper, which again makes sense if you think about what copper looks like, uh, mixing gold and red, sorry. Um, but for this guy, I decided I would add purple to it, kind of keeping in theme with making everything purple uh, and tying it together. But I think it worked really, really well because this color still reads as copper, but mixes really well with the rest of the mini because it's actually the purple that has both red and blue in it. So it's also a lot colder than a normal copper, which makes it just work with the rest of the theme of this miniature. Uh, I also made sure that when I mix this color, I mix in a little bit of black and a little bit of brown to darken it so that I can actually add the highlights, which is just straight purple and straight gold. And I go about highlighting this like any other part of the miniature. I think for a while when I did metallics, I assumed that I had to paint them differently, but it's just as important to make sure that you're adding highlights in these details, even if you're mixing metallic paints, because it kind of draws your eye to a natural light position that you've done with all of your matte colors and not just kind of trusting the uh, shininess of the metallic paints. However, when I go around to the other metallic parts of the miniature, adding on a base coat of gunmetal, I was kind of running out of time for this video. Um, as of recording this part right here, I need to have this video out in an hour. So I'm a little rushed at this point. And um, so I decided I would do a simple metal recipe where it's just the straight metal and null oil, which I'm gonna add later. I then go around all the parts that I wanted to paint black. Uh, just kind of covering those details again to add some variation into the um, into the little bits of technology that are here and there uh, to add a little variation from the gunmetal and the copper. And then I take a lighter brown that I also mix with some purple and start doing some hash marks and some checking and some just some little detailing onto the leather to make it look a little bit worn. Normally I would go over this with a um, dark brown wash but the brown base coat I had added for the leather was already as dark as I wanted it, and adding the brown wash would have made it too dark and it just wouldn't have read well. I can then add some final details, putting a little bit of purple into the eyes of the uh, Space Marine to kind of give them that kind of glass shining glow and to tie everything together again. And I also go over all of the copper parts again to do a little bit of an edge highlighting to bring out some of the details and kind of just finish up the look on the, all of the copper parts of the miniature. I can then actually go over all of the metal parts of the miniature and add the Nuln oil to really dull the color, make it not quite as bright, and just match the darker tone of the rest of the mini. And then I can paint the purity seals, which I definitely didn't forget to do and was saving to do last on purpose. 
going over those in kind of a khaki color that I add a little bit of purple to to darken and then painting the actual wax seals a purple as well. I'm really stoked with how this project turned out. I think this is probably the best um, painted miniature I've done. I'm really happy with how it turns out. It's just exactly what I wanted it to be and the feel that I was going for. Um, and I also think the conversion looks really cool and I like how the cloak turned out even though I was totally winging it. Um, I'm gonna have to figure that out. I don't know if this is going to be a part one of a series. If you guys wanna see me do all the five of the miniatures that I'm planning on doing, I'm pretty sure it's five for a kill team. Um, uh, and I can just kind of focus on trying to make each of the guys unique and playing around with different feels for each of them, almost kind of treating each of the Space Marines like a character. Um, so I don't know if you guys want to see that. If you do, let me know in the comments. Uh, but aside from that, uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Um, as some of you might notice, I'm in a different place. Um, this is not my normal uh, office. Um, I've moved to Canada. So that's an interesting thing, I guess. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, again, leave a like, subscribe, leave a comment if you have any tips, tricks, advice, anything, uh, suggestions for future videos as well. Um, but nonetheless, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.